Give me a pin. You tell we got monitors knocked off okay. in the newsroom. 4 30. That camera does not move, does it? I can't tell if we're on the air or not. Okay, we've got another aftershock coming. I'm ready to go, but I don't hear any uh, audio. I don't hear any audio. Okay. Okay. We're here in the Channel 4 newsroom, as you folks. There's no surprise. For any folks this morning, we've been hit with a major earthquake. Right now, we're trying to basically gather some more information, trying to figure out where this has been centered. I'm not sure if we can take a look around that right now, but half the newsroom behind me has been disheveled. A lot of television monitors knocked off the shelves. Uh, basically, a lot of dust kicking around here. We're trying to figure out, again, where this uh, earthquake has been centered. It hit at about 4.34 this morning. A very sharp jolt. A very long, a very rolling uh, type of motion right now. Again, I'm not sure if we have any more information coming in right now. Right now, everybody seems to be scrambling. We're trying to figure out, again, where this was centered. I personally have a lot of concerns from my family. Hopefully... I don't know, Michelle, if you can hear this, I hope you're okay. Here comes another aftershock. Okay, a third aftershock. This is a long one. Okay, this is still staying with us here. We're rolling back and forth, left to right here. Okay, Ken Shognick is joining us right now. Ken, how, how you doing? You holding in there, my friend? Good morning, Joe. I'm going to sit down with you in one second if they can hear me on your microphone. No. Here's what I have seen on the drive-in. What you have probably been talking to viewers about on the drive-in. I wonder what that drive-in was like. It's very dark out there because a lot of electricity mm -hmm. has been lost around Southern California. Good morning to you. We've had another one of those earthquakes. Joe's been telling you about it. Coming in about 431, 432, 432 this morning. How's your adrenaline level? The adrenaline level, as always in Southern California <laughs> times like this, probably just about the same as your own. Yeah. But there have been big, widespread areas without electricity in Southern California. Uh, coming through the San Gabriel Valley, I get a chance to look down during part of the drive and see part of the L.A. Basin. Mm -hmm. The portion of the L.A. Basin that I saw did have most electricity. However, in the San Gabriel Valley and in parts of the San Fernando Valley, there have been areas knocked out of electricity. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the concerns this morning. And you no doubt have been talking about the damage here <laughs> we'll take in our own Channel 4 newsroom. Room. It's incredible. This probably the sharpest shock we have felt no doubt about it. in Southern California since 1971 and Silmar. This a live picture from our Channel 4 News seismic hey, cam showing an aftershock uh, I've got, I've got apparently to, to this camera, morning's okay. 4.30 earthquake. Okay. Again, we don't know the size of the original earthquake. We don't know the epicenter, but we are assuming at this point that what you're looking at right now is one of the aftershocks from the earthquake. And there will be several, Joe, that we're going to feel just perhaps in the next few minutes or so. I can't recall when the last quake we had, but, I, but I've often thought, you know, I wonder when, when, when the next one's going to hit. We've been very lucky. We have not been hit by quakes. I'm not sure if this is a matter of superstition or just wondering when's our luck going to run out. But this is Southern California, and uh, this is the ring of fire, if you will. And it's something that people say, oh, you, you should get used to, but you don't. And you take it so personally because this thing hit. There was nowhere to run. There's no place to hide. You see things falling off. And for the first time, as I was running through the hallways from the editing base out here into the newsroom, there was actual dust coming down from the ceiling. From the plaster. Yeah. And the first thing I'm thinking is the four floors above me. I said, Lord mercy. Hang in there, don't come down on me now. And basically, it's one of the words of advice that um, I think we're always using is staying underneath the door jams, and we hopefully that, uh, that people are doing that this morning. We have all made it through. As far as we can tell so far, that is good news. You're there. We're here. We will try to keep you up to date with continuing live coverage of exactly what's going on. I do not have to tell those of you who went through that earthquake that those first few minutes were really, really something. And as often happens with a reporter, when you get a story like this, the, the adrenaline level just, just goes full tilt. Joe Rico was here to talk about that. Yours had to be 110%. Absolutely. Sky high. It was just nonstop. It's like you get that feeling, your ears are ringing. This is real, folks. That kind of... What about the people that were here with you at 4.30 in the morning? What was their reaction? What were they doing when this thing hit? I hope they were running for cover, for one thing. Yeah. I mean, because when that thing hit, we basically, everybody seemed to go for their own doorway. And you're looking down, and I, we were assuming everybody had their position. We all rode that thing out, and I think um, once the shaking stopped, once the generator lights kicked on, everyone looks out, say, are you okay? Yes, and the word just kind of went down, down the hallway. Are you okay? Yeah, are you okay? You're right. Yeah. Suddenly, people are yelling, let's go. Let's get it on the air. We got to go. And people are scrambling left and right, going to their edit bays, going to um, playback machines, getting, getting us on the air. 
and you know, sprinting through, and it was, it was madness, but it was organized. You mentioned your family. Right. You mentioned your family on the air, that how concerned you were for their safety, and well you should have been. Yeah. How long was it before you had contact with your family to know that they were okay? I'm going to think about six hours. It wasn't until about two in the afternoon. That long? That long, right. Um, it's like, I think one of the things they always say is call a relative out of state just in case they can't get through to you and they'll relay the call back home and just right. in case the lines are down locally. You know, I, I tried doing that. I couldn't reach anyone. But um, I recall the first thing um, as I'm also getting reports in and we're trying to update things, what's going on. And all the while, I'm just kind of dying inside wondering, I hope they're okay. Because I had no idea where the epicenter was, whether it was where I live, you know, in, in the South Pasadena area or whether it was San Fernando Valley. We had no idea. Right. And um, you assume the worst. You can't help but assume the worst. And, you know, and there's three little ones, you know, ages 10, 6, and 3. How did you finally find out about your family? Was it a phone call that you managed to make or they made to you or how? I was um, in the field in front of the uh, Northridge Meadows apartments where it collapsed. All those people died. And um, I saw a woman with her child. And I thought, snap. You right. know, I imagine I, I spoke with everybody at home. But I, and the reality was I didn't. It was like my imagination carried mm -hmm. over and I thought, yeah, I made the phone call. Then I, I had to have a reality check. Wait a minute, I never did get through. And suddenly I got on the cell phone and started dialing and I still couldn't get through. And I just, one more time, and boom, I got through and it was my little boy answered. And I thought, whew. Oh, man, thank it, God. It, it, was, it, was, it was something else. It was, it was emotional too. I mean, just, I, I hate even thinking about talking about it right now. It's, it's, it was really scary, real scary. When a reporter's trying to do a job like you were, you're trying to do a job, you're trying to stay calm and objective, and yet there's so much emotion about this story. Mm -hmm. uh, did it ever really get to you emotionally? Was there a point where it really got to you? Probably at the end of the day. I think I had been up uh, 24 hours prior to the quake hitting on a hostage situation, right. and I hadn't gone to bed because I was in the newsroom rewriting it when the quake hit. And it was suddenly you're just, you're on an adrenaline rush. You're rushing everywhere. There's no time to reflect on what you have done. It wasn't until about maybe three in the afternoon when I was in front of the Northridge Meadows apartments when a um, camera crew from another program was tailing me. And I asked, what are you doing? He says, we're following you. And I thought, oh. And the guy was rolling, and, and, and the producer asked me, he says, well, did it ever get to you emotionally? Is there anything that hit you? And I thought of the image that one of our cameramen said he saw, and that was of a woman crying because her, her young son right. was killed. And immediately I thought of my little 10-year-old boy, and I lost it. You know, I heard a little one. <sighs> Just watching them died. In there. That's scary. I feel bad. So, luckily, the camera was a friend of mine, so it made it a lot easier. And I think once he finished rolling, you know, he just gave me a nice big bear hug, saying it's going to be okay. So, that was rough. Pretty is rough. It, is that the image that's going to stay with you for a long time? The image I'm going to think of is Balboa and uh, Rinaldi, because that's where you have the, the water main blue and the, uh, the gas main, and you have a combination of fire and water, buckled streets, the fury of flames, and the power of floodwaters right there in front of us, mm. and dangling overhead, power lines, and they're just like, um, like a wrecked toy set. Joe Rico, thank you very much for Good. sharing your uh, thoughts and emotions and experiences with us. Our first contact with the outside world was, as is often the case, from you, our viewers, calling in to report how much damage you had. Of course, we knew that there must be a lot of people out there who couldn't call in who had damage a lot worse. We knew that, but we weren't prepared for what we saw next. Hey, it could explode at any minute. Get out of the house. Go across the street. Evacuate the area. Get out of there. Everybody out. I'm driving along the 5 freeway. I am going southbound, and there is traffic in the southbound lanes coming at me in the number one lane. I am southbound on the 5. At the Cal Grove exit, I'm in the Santa Clarita Valley, and I'm in shock. There is traffic coming straight at me. I am going southbound on the 5, and there's traffic. I've just taken a hit. There's a, a break in the road. Have you got your gas off? 
It doesn't matter. It's in the sewer. Look at it. It's coming from under the floor. Get out before this one. Tiny. Okay, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. That's my thought. Just be careful, man. I thought I heard somebody barking. I don't know if they were barking or not. Anybody down here? Anybody down here? Hello? Is anybody there? Joe, is he underneath us? Yeah. yeah he's underneath right there. We can't get to it no. from this side. Okay. The whole thing just shifted down one. Right. Keep going. Keep going. Hey, watch out for the... Make sure there's no nails. Watch out for the nails. Oh, Everybody got him? Watch out for glass. You okay? You okay? Help him. You okay? Is it, what, is it floor or wood or what? This is all the first floor underneath here. This is the second floor right here. This is the second floor, that's the first floor. You hear that? Hey, be careful. Due to the earthquake in the area you are calling, your call cannot be completed at this time. Please try your call later.